Right, well, having looked at bronchitis and emphysema, we're now going to look at oxygen therapy. And uh, the first thing I'm going to think about is, is why might you want to give someone additional oxygen? Now, the air round about us has got 20% oxygen in it, and for most of us, for most of the time, this is enough. But sometimes, when the patient's unwell, for, some, for various reasons we're going to look at, they need a higher concentration of oxygen than is available in the atmosphere. So why might someone need oxygen? Well, the reason is that there's a lack of oxygen in the blood. That's referred to as hypoxemia. Hypoxemia, low oxygen in the blood. And this is important because it means that there's not enough oxygen in the tissues. That's called hypoxia. So if there's not enough oxygen to the brain, that will result in cerebral hypoxia. Not enough oxygen to the other parts of the body, then, then, then those organs will also be hypoxic. And of course, oxygen is necessary for every cell of the body to produce energy. Without it, it will die. So let's think about briefly, just to start off with, the causes of hypoxia. The first cause of hypoxia <coughs> is hypoxia caused for extrinsic reasons. That means there's not enough oxygen in the atmosphere. So like if someone's locked in a room and suffocating, that would be extrinsic hypoxia because there's not enough oxygen in the air around about them. Or if they're in a gassy environment and they're being gassed, the, 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 the cause of the hypoxia would be extrinsic. Or if someone was uh, in, a, in a garage filled with exhaust fumes, for example, that, that, then again that would, that would cause extrinsic hypoxia. There's not enough oxygen in the air. So that's one cause of hypoxia. <clears throat> Second cause is pulmonary hypoxia, and that's hypoxia because of lung disease. So if, in chronic bronchitis and emphysema, for example, then the hypoxia is, is pulmonary hypoxia because it's caused by inadequate lung function. The third possible cause of hypoxia is caused by shunting, arterial to venous shunting. And this occurs in various congenital abnormalities, such as when there's a hole in the heart, that's a communication between the atria normally, an, uh, an atrial septal defect. Or, or there's another one called patent ductus arteriosus, where there's a communication between, I can't remember, the pulmonary artery and the aorta, I think. But what happens in these things is that deoxygenated blood gets mixed with oxygenated blood. So that means that there's less oxygenated blood in the arterial supply, and that results in, in tissue hypoxia. The fourth possible cause of hypoxia is um, anemia, transport hypoxia, when the blood can't carry enough oxygen to the tissues. So if someone's very anemic, there's a reduced oxygen carrying capacity in the blood, therefore the tissues become hypoxic. And the fifth cause is um, histotic hypoxia, an inability of the tissues to actually use the oxygen that they get. And this occurs in poisoning, for example, cyanide poisoning, but it can also occur in vitamin B deficiencies. So most of the time when we're talking about hypoxia, the reason is due to uh, lung disease, pulmonary hypoxia, but by no means always. And if you want more details on hypoxia, there's actually a separate video on the subject. So let's just review briefly what we've said on these notes to clarify the position. So oxygen is administered when there's a deficiency of oxygen in the blood. That's hypoxemia. Because hypoxemia, low oxygen in the blood, will lead to low oxygen in the, uh, in the tissues where the oxygen is required. Causes of hypoxia. Inadequate oxygenation of the lungs for extrinsic reasons. Hypoxia secondary to pulmonary disease. And of course this can include lots and lots of lung diseases. Venous to arterial shunting. When the blood is unable to transport the oxygen from the lungs to the tissues. So inadequate transport, often referred to as anemic hypoxia. And finally, inadequate uh, inability of the tissues to use the oxygen, referred to as histotic. Hist hist histotic means related to tissues, as in histology. So as a nurse caring for any patient, it's important to ensure there is adequate oxygenation of the tissues, especially thinking about the vital organs, such as the brain, the heart, the kidneys and the liver, which require a constant oxygen supply in order to metabolize.
So sometimes additional oxygen may be required. And as nurses, very often we start this up. We give someone extra oxygen when we think they need it. But we should get a medical, medical approval for it when we can. So ideally it's prescribed, but very often we do start it ourselves. And very often we need to start it ourselves in, in, in uh, situations where the patient needs it fairly urgently. Now different patients at different times with different conditions require different amounts of additional oxygen. And we measure this in terms of percentage. So it's important to know how much oxygen the patient requires in terms of percentage and how to measure it. And uh, the measurement is usually worked out by a combination of the flow rate in litres per minute and the, uh, the, type of, the type of mask. The flow rate in litres per minute and, and the type of mask. So um, I'll just show you a, a bag here from um, a mask, a typical oxygen mask. They might not be able to see this very clearly, but this is just a bag that the mask came in. And for this particular mask, uh, an oxygen flow rate of uh, 2 litres a minute will give an average oxygen concentration of 29%. An oxygen flow of 3 litres a minute will give an oxygen concentration of 34%. 4 litres a minute will give 38%. 5 litres a minute will give 42 And 6 litres a minute will give 46%. But of course, that is specific for this uh, particular mask. So it's important to read the manufacturer's guidelines with the particular mask because these, the, the amount of litres per minute to give a particular percentage of oxygen will vary depending on the, uh, on the type of mask, on the particular mask and the way it mixes oxygen with atmospheric air. So each one you have to assess uh, separately to work out the concentration. Now let's think about when we might want to give high and when we might want to give low concentrations of oxygen. Just, just a few examples. Well, high concentrations of oxygen. I use sometimes after anaesthesia. And certainly in emergency situations, we use high concentrations of oxygen whenever there's uh, interference with airway, breathing, or circulation. Another example when it might be used is, is carbon monoxide poisoning, where we use high concentrations. Now, what about when we use lower concentrations? Well, 24% oxygen uh, is given. That's only an additional 4% over atmospheric air in, in chronic chest conditions. So if someone's got a chronic chest condition, we give them low concentrations of oxygen. Now, you might wonder why it's worth giving such a small extra concentration of oxygen. Well, the answer in, uh, lies in a, in a reasonably complex area of physiology called the oxygen dissociation curve. And this is an S-shaped curve, and part of the curve is steep. And what that means is that for a little increase in oxygen concentration, you can get a lot more oxygen absorbed into the blood. So for someone with chronic obstructive airways disease, that 4% extra oxygen can make a big, big difference to the amount of oxygen carried in the blood. So it's well worth doing. So high concentrations and low concentrations, depending on the patient's uh, condition. And the percentage concentration, as we've said, is achieved by controlling the flow rate in litres per minute and by the mask. A particular mask with a particular flow rate will give a particular concentration. Now oxygen should be humidified if it's given for long periods of time. And there's different ways we can do this. And I've got a simple device uh, here that we can use for humidification. So um, I'm just going to take the top off this. This is a very simple sort of thing. Trouble I've got a glass of water in my hand. Take the top off that. Right. And I can put some water in there. Actually, this is normally used for giving, uh, giving nebulized drugs, this, but it, it works, for, it will humidify it as well. Then the oxygen supply is connected to there. Then the mask going to the patient is connected there. And you can see this bubbles 